Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a scenario that happened here this last, well, about two weeks ago now on LinkedIn. Um, trying to give you guys a little bit of industry perspective because often you don't get this from reading online. There's often a lot of name calling and things just seem confusing and then people just pick sides and things make no sense. So let me get at the story here in itself. An individual who's quite controversial um, in the finance, quant, banking space in general um, can be a little bit, uh, I'm going to say heavy handed, uh, a little bit not understanding of kind of social etiquette, but often post things and is right 70% of the time. I'm going to put 70%. And they made this post and it was an interesting post on, you know, when you do something like value at risk, you should not be using the normal distribution. And of course, they go through a whole academic quantitative approach of explaining why this is complete garbage and how the industry has no idea what they're doing and they should not be using the normal distribution. And then I saw that and I read that and I was like, yeah, I get it. I completely agree, right? Makes complete sense. And then about a few days after that, I saw another post of someone, again, who I was not connected with, but a lot of people were interacting with, and it was in response to this first individual's post. And it was, you know, this individual knows absolutely nothing. Um, they lack complete competence and understanding of the industry. They have no academic rigor. And they were like really trying to go after them on a somewhat personal note, but trying to keep it professional. But I read it and I'm like, okay, so this individual's take on this was, you know, I've been working in quant finance in the industry. Um, we have not been using the normal distribution since like the 80s. You know, I've been working and we've never used the normal distribution. And, you know, we are far more complex and complicated. And, you know, this individual basically is just slandering the industry and is absolutely nothing. So I read that and I'm like, okay, I get that. But I agree with both, but these sound like opposite sides of an argument, right? One saying the industry is using normal distributions and has no idea what they're doing. The other side is saying the industry knows everything. They're super complicated. They're super quantitative. They're very scientific. And yet this other individual is lying and doesn't know what they're doing. And so you have these feuds and the truth of the whole matter is they're both correct. That is why this is very hard to see because logically it seems like one must be right and one must be wrong. So let me get into this a little bit here. One of the big focuses of this channel in itself has been trying to get things very defined, right? Being very intentional about what you are talking about. So the word quant means nothing. It is complete trash these days. It has no value. It has no meaning. Um, more generally, it's like an entire industry that kind of covers anything and everything in finance. And if you add two numbers together, you are now a quant according to the vast majority of them. So this is what's happening with this argument that we're seeing is a similar kind of, we are not defining what we are talking about. And because we're not defining that, uh, we are just mixing kind of everything together and name calling and things kind of get out of hand a little bit. Um, if you go on any sort of online forum that claims to be quantitative finance, you will see the same kind of arguments and the same issues here. The reason this is happening is because one, as I have gone through conferences, uh, as I've interviewed individuals, as I've ran into people at the industry, um, just working different jobs, the reality is there are tons and tons of firms that claim to be quantitative finance firms that are using the normal distribution and calculating VAR this way. Surprise, uh, there are lots of firms that just aren't real smart. I'm sorry. Um, and then it comes into me saying, you're not a quant fund. I am, don't know what you're doing, but you are not quantitative finance. Um, and I hate getting into this rabbit hole of trying to define who is a quant and who's not a quant. And then I have to go historically. So somebody mentioned a Reddit post that was trying to slam me about how I had no idea what quantitative finance was because obviously I'm not investing. And then it's like, well, technically, uh, yeah, quant finance started on the sell side, which was the banking side and only in derivatives. And you look at the history of that and then it slowly spread into other products again on the sell side, which is the banking side, which is where I work. And then it slowly spread into the buy side. Now you could argue... Um, that it was done a little bit differently because there is uh, an individual, I'm trying to remember the guy's name here, uh, the gambling guy with like blackjack and everything and, um, who did was using similar equations. Some people claim the same equations. I don't really know, don't really care. Um, that was using them at a firm and they were doing some sort of research with that. That is fine, but historically the term quant was applied to those in the banking side on the sell side of this. So that's kind of the historical piece of that. But that's not the point of this. The point of this is that Quantitative rigor and doing things the academic scientific way is important 
for actual quantitative finance. You can't just be doing math and stats loosely off the seat of your pants, like machine learning, for example, as many have done. And you can do machine learning very rigorously and very academically, but there are a lot of people that are doing quantitative finance as they like to call it, but they're not really doing it the scientific method. And because of that, it's not really quantitative finance. So this is what muddies the waters with this argument because there are many firms that are not using um, complex methods. So for example, using a kernel density estimation or something, looking at data points, using some industry expertise, creating actual curves out of this based on the assets that you're looking at of the portfolio, um, and then actually doing some sort of value at risk here. There are even lazier ways of doing this too. I've seen people that take historicals and will just stack them all together cut 95%, whatever, they're 95% VAR, do their calculation and say that's good enough as well. Um, it's not. You don't have enough robust data here. Again, you're lacking the academic rigor here. So on one side, the first individual um, is correct. The industry is garbage and it sucks and it's awful. But again, it's how do you define the industry here, right? Is it really the quantitative funds or is it just anyone who claims to be a quantitative fund or quantitative methods in general? Now, the other individual, the responses has a complete valid argument in a case here. And this is where I typically sit. And it's my frustration, which is too many people are claiming to say quant finance is what they're doing and they're not doing it. Um, and then realistically, when people are saying, hey, the quant finance industry is very simple, they're using simple linear regression, um, they're doing this, they're doing that, and they oversimplify everything, that's not true either. There's our firms and funds and banks and institutions that are doing very complicated, academically rigorous kind of scientific research, going through the process, building out models, um, on the other side of that. And I'll give you an example of this too. I was at a conference recently and somebody mentioned like, you know, so you build a model and you use a model and it works and everything. And then, you know, no one ever goes back and tests the model. They just continue to use the model. And I'm scratching my head like, what? You use, and then there was another comment prior in a different meeting I had with a similar individual on how I said, well, models fail. And they go, models don't, what do you mean models fail? Like they're not failing. You're just using the model. And so to my surprise in many parts of the industry here, um, yes, there are people that are not doing things very rigorously. Um, and then we had to point out in a sort of discussion here that the banks are actually required to do model monitoring, which to my surprise, people are not doing. Um, and then they do not do model validation, which is a whole area that I worked in for eight years. Again, model validation is going through it at an academic stance as well as looking at it from an industry practitioner stance of what is useful, right? You'll never get perfect academic solutions and nice pretty things working out. So you have to bend the rules here and there. But understanding when you bend those rules, what is the consequence of bending that rule? How do you track that over time? How do you do model monitoring? Um, and then how do you make some sort of impact change and assessment to make sure that you're consistently doing the right thing here? So this is why the quant industry is very confusing and very frustrating. One is that most people are not intentional and they just say quant finance, which is why people get frustrated with me because I get very, very detailed on when you say quant, are you talking a quantitative researcher and model developer? Or are you talking a quant dev? Or are you talking about a trader? And let's not forget the person that all of you forget. The data engineers at the very beginning of this process, right? You do the data engineering and data storage and cleaning and processing and quality control. And then you have model development or research and you build out strategies and all that. And then you have the quant dev who's implementing these sorts of things into tools and making them run faster. Everything. And then you have the trader or the business person at the end using the tool here. So being very intentional in this, being very intentional in general when I try to talk about buy side versus sell side, the reason for this is because there are so many nuances within this. And even when I talk sell side, because I've worked so long on the sell side, um, I try to say, oh, the, the large global banks or the large firms themselves. Because typically the large firms are highly regulated with a lot more strict rules and regulations. And yes, there are ones that are like, they're not following the rules, but they're getting by passing regulations. Uh, and I've been hearing rumors lately about some of these issues. So it's kind of in my mind. Um, typically, larger firms are a little bit more complicated. They pay a bit more. They have a lot more organization and structure and dynamics, and they can afford to be more academic. When you have smaller firms, often it's less people. There's less regulations. You're running fast, and you just don't have the time to be as academic, which I would argue is reckless, irresponsible behavior, and you should be putting more uh, kind of safeguards and academic scientific approach solutions in place. 
But in general, guys, I hope the takeaway from this video is when you read things, don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to jump on a solution. Um, start to think about why it could be true or why it couldn't be true. Even myself being in the industry for a very long time here. I mean, I'm over, I think, decade now, like 11 years-ish, something like that. Um, doing this for 11 years and running a YouTube channel for, I think, 10 of those 11 years, basically, in working with so many people and talking at all these conferences, right? It's easy for me to jump and say, oh, I agree with person A, I agree with person B, and then not to realize, like, wait, these seem like opposite ideas. Why do they not make sense? And then try to go about this more of a quantitative logic perspective of, okay, let's tear this apart. Let's really think about this. And then realize, okay, we need to be more specific and intentional in what we are talking about, how we are talking about it, uh, and how we are kind of addressing these sorts of conversations or arguments and disputes. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Okay.